against the worship. Okay, my surprise today. Uh, most of you, I think, know Rob. Rob Shoplock, our, uh, one of our son in laws, married to Kelly. The favorite. Uh, huh? The favorite. The favorite, yes. <laughs> when, whenever Rob calls and Belinda answers the phone and he says, uh, This is your favorite son in law, and Belinda says that to me, I said, Get on the phone and say, Hi, Brad, how are you doing? <laughs> But uh, <laughs> Rob and uh, Izzy uh, went to Kenya uh, back a few weeks ago, and uh, we were wanting to have Izzy here today, but she's sick and uh, unable to make it. But uh, he's got a, a little presentation for us, letting us know some of the work that they did there and uh, some of the work that's going to be continuing in the years to come. And uh, our church helped Rob go financially. So uh, I think it's nice that we get a report back from him for all that uh, has taken place. So uh, you want him on this mic? He wants you want to stand or sit? Yeah. Okay, that was, that was okay. good then. So, Rob, come on up. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Dad said I had three hours to get this done. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. First off, a huge thank you to Common Ground Biker Church for so weird behind me. For uh, for blessing Isabel and I to travel to Kenya to spread the word, to spread the gospel. Um, as Dad said, my name's Rob. I'm saved. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and I will proclaim that every day. Uh, amen. It is, um, this gives me some flashes and some pictures up behind me. Uh, I think there's only like 15 or 18 of them. And we'll see a school, but I kind of want to just share a few things about the trip and what it's like in, in ministry in Africa um, and to encourage every one of you to start ministering. And, and I know you all do, but, but even more, just put it on your heart to, um, to share the word, to share the gospel, and just know that millions of people a day are dying and going to hell. And it is the responsibility of us as Christians to do whatever we can to stop that highway to hell and get that highway moving upward. I know we've all heard the cliche, the highway to hell, the stairway to heaven. We need to get that flip. We need to cut that, that highway off. So um, starting off going to Africa, this was my fourth trip. Common Ground Biker Church has supported my, uh, this ministry, myself, in the past. And again, I can't thank you enough what it means to me. Um, to be able to spread the love and the gospel to Kenyans and what we're doing in Africa. So really the, the, the point of the mission trip is a medical mission. And I can tell you what, that is how we, uh, it's like fishing, right? You throw the lure in, you want to get them in the boat. We want them in prayer tents. We want them getting saved. We want to pray for them. And uh, we, want to, we want to rebuke the enemy because I'm telling you what, spiritual warfare is real. And it started day one when we left Boise. Uh, our, there was a team of 26 of us. It took three different flights to get all of us to Africa. So it was kind of smiling at the beginning, like, you know what, Satan doesn't want this to happen. This is gonna be awesome. Lots of people are gonna give their life to Christ. So um, with that being said, we made it to Nairobi. Um, praise God, everybody made it there safe. The first couple days we were there, we worked in a clinic. Um, and this is the clinic here, this young man sitting in the chair on the right. He was probably two or three days away from dying. Uh, with kidney and liver failure. Mm -hmm. He was very, very sick. Uh, it was amazing to get to pray for him, his family, and get him the help that he needed. So when you support financially just the ministry of us going over there, we also take a portion of the funds and we, we put it into a pot so we're able to take very sick people like him and get him the help that he needs, not just in our clinic, but the long-term care. So it is, it is amazing that this young man is going to have a, have a long life ahead of him and see what God's going to do to him. Um, so like I said, the, the camp that we were first with, when I first went to Africa, there was 4,000 people living in these little shacks. And these shacks were like 10 foot by 10 foot bamboo. And the government gave them um, just some plastic tarps to build homes out of. So you have 4,000 people living in this village. They were forgotten about. 
the government, put them away, and the best way I can describe these people would be is if you had a small community, maybe like council, right, where you have, or so let's say star, you have 10,000 people living in a community. It, they might be one of 42 tribes in Africa, and as the tribal clashes come, they would come in and murder every man in that <coughs> city. And then the government needs to find out what to do with the women, the children, the elders. So what do they do? They put them in, a, in, a, in the forest where they're out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. So these 4,000 people since the early 2000s, um, Expansion International out of Meridian, uh, through some friends of ours at different churches in the valley, found this camp. And over the last 20 years, we've been able to resettle them um, about three hours away to some very fertile land with closer to health care, um, closer to jobs and prosperity. So certainly amazing. This is one of the schools that we went to. The great thing about Kenya is they love Jesus for the most part, the government. They want us in the schools. They want us preaching the gospel. Now it gets a little hairy when you get up next to Somalia because you have the Muslim influence. But when we're talking about the rest of the country, you got an Africa. Africa's boundaries were a result of the Brits, the Italians, the Germans. You know, they're the ones who put these lines. Tribes in Africa don't don't use the borders that really were put there for them. So when you have a country like Kenya, you have three quarters Christians and you have one quarter Muslim, and all of that is because of tribal lines. I'll get into that in just a sec. I promise I'll, I won't make this three hours long. I was given ten minutes, and he's supposed to give me the sign of get off. I <laughs> am. <laughs> Uh, so, as we finished up the first couple days in camp, we were getting ready to get up to a camp that we had never been to before. Uh, and I got to tell you, Satan was attacking me from day one saying, man, this is nuts, you shouldn't be going. We were like 60, 70 miles from the Somalia border. So as you're driving there, you got the UN, you have the Kenyan military, you got the British Royal Air Force Base, <laughs> and you have people with machine guns all over the place, and you're thinking, this is wild. And there was my 14-year-old daughter. And God gave me such an amazing peace. At the end of those five days, I'm like, I can move here. It, it, you know what I mean? It went from so much fear to God saying, he opened up stuff that I can't. I'm going to do my best to explain it. But we saw stuff, <coughs> sisters and brothers, that I, I, I still can't believe we saw. And, and when I say that, it was the Holy Spirit working. We are just, all of us, we are not, it's not us, we are conduits of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And amen, yeah, it, it was amen. waking up every day saying, God, it is not wrong. This is you working through me, let's do it. Um, so we're up you know, close to the Somalia border, preaching to Muslims. And <laughs> I can tell you what, it is a different type of ministry. You know, we get a lot of our LDS friends here in this community, um, and I think, Personally, I've, I've, I've got scripture that I can go to them with, but then you start talking with a Muslim, I've never, I've never entered that realm. When a Muslim in Kenya gives their life to Christ, they are immediately a target to be murdered. So when they come into camp, and they're in their attire, their hats, their traditional Muslim wear, and they give their life to Christ, there is now a three-year commitment from the churches there to give them teachings underground. Uh, there's underground churches. They go to their mosques still. When they get down and pray, they teach them how to ignore what is being said over the speakers and what prayer is going on and, and giving their life to Jesus and what that means. The pastor that we worked with was Muslim. He's been to America. He's, a, he's an amazing guy. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. And we were talking and he just had these burn marks up his arm and you know you spend hours and hours and I told him I was a fireman so we, this kind of comes into you know what happened he tells me the story about becoming a Christian and about his family torturing his wife many times binding gagging beating burning him and that's what it's like in Kenya when you're a Muslim and you want to give your life to Christ but they know they know what it means to spend eternity in heaven or eternity in hell. And that's the message that we get to speak over there. So it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, finally, the last part of our trip was leaving the Somalia, you know, north of Kenya. We went way down south. We were right underneath Mount 
uh, Kilimanjaro. We're about 30 miles from the Tanzania border, working with the Maasai. And the Maasai are a proud, proud group. They are the only tribe, the only people in the world that the Brits never defeated. And that was, I believe, in World War I when they came in. So you talk about respect. There is not a, a tribe, a country, um, a group in Kenya that doesn't respect the Maasai. And just because of that history and, and how strong those women and men are of, the, of that tribe. So ministering to some people who, you know, are thought of pretty high and bringing them down and having them submit their lives to Christ is, is, a, is a very humbling experience, but it was an amazing experience for us mm -hmm. to get to share, uh, share the gospel. So a couple last things before I finish up. Working in the prayer tent, um, I got to tell you, we, we, Izzy and I were going to do this together, and I kept thinking, okay, I got to write this amazing story out. But then at the end of the day, everything that Jesus Christ does is amazing. So it really doesn't matter which verses we're going to pull out. I can just, I'm going to yap and throw it out there to you, and hopefully it touches each one of you guys. Uh, we think back here in America. I got to tell you, um, prayer is the most important thing we as Christians can do. And I. I had a quote I wanted to, a couple quotes I want to read before I did this. When we go to God in prayer, the devil knows that we go to fetch strength against him, and therefore he opetheth all. So us going to prayer automatically kicks up a red flag, but it puts us in union with Christ, right? So I'm encouraging you guys every morning as we wake up, what we were doing there is putting on the armor of God. And I think it is just absolutely one of the most important things we can do is armor up in the morning and be in praying throughout the day. Um, so I wrote down as we were praying for people some of the needs that people had. And I thought, okay, you know, I'm going to be able to pray for these people when we get back to America. And I want to share just a couple because I think we can all relate to this. A uh, lady came into the tent. Her name was Dorcas. She has neck pain, back pain, stomach pain. Um, and she feels like she's always being attacked. I said, oh, quite a bit of Americans have that too, right? Um, Masao came in, physically hurting and his business is suffering. Uh, money is being spent on witch doctors for hope, or for help. Okay, let's pray about that. We uh, don't want to go to the witch doctors, let's go to Christ. Um, here comes somebody, chest pains. Got a lot of blood pressure problems. Loda comes in. We're sitting there talking. Hey, Loda, how are you? Nice uh, lady in her 70s, and, and I'm with the pastor. And I said, you know, how can we pray for you? And the translator looks over and says, um, shaking his head, okay, okay. I said, okay, what's up? She had chest pain, back pain, high blood pressure. No, um, she has pain around her lips. Nightly, she is raped by demons in her house. She sleeps in bushes to avoid them, and her family's not saved. And my eyes just got huge. I said, are you kidding me? Is she okay? And he goes, oh, no, man, that happens a lot here. He didn't say it like that, obviously. I'm just giving you the American version. No, man, that happens a lot here. Yeah. I said, what, what do you mean that happens a lot here? He goes, do you realize the spiritual warfare that happens when you take a Muslim and a Christian community and they mesh and then you have tribal beliefs and people are seeking everything but the Holy Spirit to get prayer? I got to tell you, sisters and brothers, we had the most prayerful time with these people that to break the bonds, to, to break those strongholds, those principalities. And um, it, yeah, the spirit, of, the spirit of Christ is amazing. The Holy Spirit was able to break hundreds of these things that we were seeing there. So um, just going to finish up by sharing one verse with you guys. <coughs> you know when you mark your Bible twice, and you pull the wrong one. <laughs> Real quick, um, one of the things, one of the scriptures that I encouraged a lot of our, our Kenyans uh, that were coming into their prayer tent was this, and it's in Matthew um, chapter 7, verse 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find it. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Sisters and brothers, it is important for us every day come to Christ in prayer I can't thank you enough for what God is doing over there I feel like my spiritual level my relationship with God 
went to another level. I encourage all of you to pray, consider ministering outside of the valley. And um, I, I can tell you, if God puts it on your heart, you know, certainly follow those, uh, follow, follow what he's doing. And I will say, mom and dad, on my way here, your daughter and your granddaughter sent me a text that says, hey, dad, we should adopt three more kids. So I want prayer for what they're thinking is not. <laughs> <laughs> A little nervous about what they're hearing right now. So, anyways, thank you so much for having me here. God bless you. Looking forward to the sermon, Dad. And uh, again, thank you so much.